Alrighty. So, we're almost done. Let's see. I think I have everything that I need. Yeah, because I'm not going to, just in case I feel the spirit. So, anyway, um, I'm going to just wind this on. And just in case I feel the spirit, <laughs> it's late. It's about um, 10 something on a Thursday evening and I have something I have to do tomorrow. Okay, so here we go. All right, so, yeah. All right, so what I have here is, okay, I must say, I adore the fact that I can use, um, for my sample loom, I use regular letter size paper. And for this loom, um, I'm using legal paper to separate my warp. And so you'll see what I'm doing in a minute, but I love that I can just use a ton of it. It's just plain legal paper and it works like a charm. So what I'm going to start out by doing is I'm just going to start out by beginning the process of winding the warp onto the back bead. I'm going to go ahead and unloose the knot that I had tied to keep my warp chain from coming undone. And I'm just going to untie this knot. And like I said, if you're going to be going straight from warping to winding it on, then you don't really need to tie a knot. But um, if you're going to be using it for any amount of time, then you're going to want to tie a knot. So I'm going to start off by this one. I'm going to wind it around. And just before my apron rod goes under my warp again, I just take a piece, just a single sheet of this paper. And I just put it up and put it right there. And I pull my warp and the tension kind of holds the paper in place. And I just wind. Now, the edges are going to have more tension on it than the center, but that's fine because as you start to pull, when you, when you start to undo your, your knots, and there would be a good argument for not putting them so close together because you're going to have to stop and undo them every so often. You can re-tension it and you're holding it yourself. And you know what I love about this? Sometimes when you have a friend or someone helping and holding you, holding it for you, they can't always get the tension exactly like you might want it. But when you're holding it yourself, you can visually see areas of the warp that need to be a little bit tighter. And you can hold it yourself. And so then you just let go, no big deal, nothing going to go amiss. Get another piece of paper, put it up, and just put it like that, and grab it, hold the tension. I am blessed that my little girl sleeps very hard because this, this, is, this is a little bit louder than my sampler. But no worries. She is not that cold. All right, so I'm going to keep going. And, and that's as simple as it is. I mean, because you have it tied, you're not going to lose all of your, um, it's going to keep it from being, from, from getting crazy on you. So when tying it, it's kind of like having little hands at various parts of your warp. And you just hold onto it with one hand. Now I am right-handed. So um, I'm not sure how it would be if I were a lefty. Just because I'm curious. So I'm going to try it. I don't know. I, I would think that this is simple, that even if you were left-handed, you should be able to still do it like this. But for the devilment of it. <laughs> Let me just see if I were, if I were a left-handed person. 
and my, I was wanting to wind it with my dominant hand. I guess you could just hold it with the right hand and cross over. Yeah, no biggie. Super simple. And you just keep putting your paper through it. And I find that because I put paper through it all the way from the beginning till the last, you know, right before I cut it on, I put paper on that, um, yeah, I, I put on crazy long warps. I think the longest that warp that I put on a rigid held loom may have been like nine yards or so. Now granted, I generally use really thin yarn for my work, but um, I've never had any problems with tensions, tensioning, or anything like that. And I credit it because I put paper all the way through. Near the yarn should touch. It is totally tensioned. And I mean... Yeah, this part is like, it is easy. Not that the other part was hard, but I know this part used to be, the winding on part used to be the part that gave me fits, to be honest with you, because you're always worried that something's going to start going wonky and crazy, and I'm done. This was the shortest of all, all the three videos. I am done. And let me see. I am actually, I'm feeling, I'm feeling whatever, I'm not sure what the word is right now, it's too late, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you the last steps for those of you who may be new to weaving after you have wound your warp onto your back beam, the next thing you're going to do, you see I just cut, cut it, I don't cut it until after I have, um, Wound it on, you know, Murphy, <laughs> Murphy, I don't like Murphy, not if your name is Murphy, it's not that I don't like you, I don't like Murphy's Law, and Murphy's Law is, is that if it can go wrong, it will go wrong, as such, I try to avoid things, I want to Murphy proof my life, and that's why I don't cut my warp until after I've wound it all on, because, why? Why tempt fate? Why have all this stuff come undone on you? That just... I've had it happen. I actually, um, I remember my, my, something, I was warping my loom, and I don't remember what happened, but something happened, and, um, my daughter was sitting beside me, I can't remember if it was above, or she fell, or whatnot, and so I threw the loom, <laughs> to get her and it, you know she was perfectly fine um but yeah i it, it was at this point and i had cut it and so the heddle and everything came out and it came undone and um my my husband just had this look just like oh man you know because he knew that it was going to be a pain to re-warp or, or, or to get it all put back together, but it, it wasn't it wasn't a big a deal. Yeah, but anyway, that's why I don't cut my warp until I have gotten to this point. So you, what I do is I generally you don't have to do it, but I generally section off my my warp into bundles, and depending on the dent, will be depending will depend on how many threads are in each bundle. Um, I'm using a 7.5 dent reed, the reed that comes with your loom when you get a loom from Ashford. And so I am sectioning my warp off into um, eight thread bundles. And here's what I do to further Murphy proof my life. As I thread a section, I um, tie a knot, and I work back and forth. So I did a little bit on that side. I'm gonna come over to this side. The nice thing about um, 
spreading your petal before you wind going so you don't get too many twisted threads. But when you're just doing like, you know, plain weave, it's not that big a deal. When you're doing um, weaving with two petals, twists can be a real pain. And so that's why I will do my threading before I actually wind on. So I actually cut my threads from the apron rod, tie them in carefully, you know, pull a little thread through, and then I will thread my heddle front to back style, I guess, and then um, wind on to the back beam. I'll show you one, one day. Or if you just take a look at the videos that I did about double weaving on a Cricut loom, you'll see me do that. I thread the heddles from the back, and then I wind on. Go back over to this side. So anyway, I think this video is going to be relatively short if I stop it now, but you've seen pretty much the process. You saw me how I um, how I, I use a warping board to wind my warp onto my loom, and then I tied off my warp, and then I chained it and attached it so it didn't go anywhere. Finally, I wound on, I wound my warp onto my back beam and separated the threads using, um, I, I am on a 16 inch loom and I'm using legal paper to separate the threads. I'm using legal paper to separate the threads and, um, and yeah. I separated my, um, after I cut my threads, I separated my threads into bundles, and right now I'm going back and forth across the warp, um, threading my petal. You don't have to go back and forth, you can go straight across. That's just one of my little quirks. And I guess in my mind, okay, so say. God forbid, something happened and this thing falls off. If it falls off, I'm doing this just for y'all. You know I'm doing this right. Why would I tempt fate? But just because, just because I want to show you, this is why. So I'm pulling this. The knots are going to stop it before it comes all the way off. So if, if something were to happen and this fell, there's a chance that I might be able to rescue it before all of these come loose, right? Because I have knots at both sides of it. And the more knots I put in, the less, um, the more I Murphy-proof this, <laughs> this warp in case the awful, the unthinkable happens and something happens and my, my, my um, loom falls on the ground and my head falls before I'm able to secure this warp to this front beam. So that's why I go back and forth. That's just me. Better safe than sorry. Yes, <laughs> you're thinking. She's probably not the, you know, I probably am a stick in the mud sometimes. But, you know, I, 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 I am a fun person. But there's some things that I'd rather be, you know, better safe than sorry. Yes, that is the, that's the motto I live by. Sometimes, most of the time. All right, y'all. So, I think I'm going to call this video a wrap. I'm going to finish threading this petal. I have two more looms to finish. And I've got, um miles to go before I sleep because I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this video but I hope that it's been helpful to you. If it has leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up. Please rate, comment, um, subscribe to my channel. That would that would mean a whole lot to me and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for watching. And wherever you are, whatever time of the day, have a good one. All right, so I'm going to put this, I'm going to pull these forward. All right, so I'm going to pull these forward. And there we go. Y'all have a good night or day.